Hi, and welcome to the Nuclear Snail channel. In this episode, I'm going to talk about more common post-apocalyptic beginner mistakes that might be making your first costume not as good as you would like it to be. So, if you're a total beginner, or if you already have a costume but are not quite happy with it, then this video is for you. Consider it to be part 2 of my common post-apocalyptic beginner mistakes video. If you did not see that one yet, then watch it after this one, because those mistakes are in no particular order. So, starting in no particular order, uh, mistake number zero, that applies to total beginners. It's uh, when some people tend to think that if they go to their first post-apocalyptic life event, that everyone is gonna make fun of them or not like them or whatever if their costume is not perfect or at least very very good and to put it short that's not true i went to my first couple of post-apocalyptic larps in a total noob costume because i was a total noob and i had the time of my life those were my best larps and people were supportive and friendly and just awesome so don't worry about it of course, you should not just ignore the setting and show up in a, a black t-shirt and blue jeans without a speck of dust on you, because that would be just signaling disrespect towards everyone else who is at least trying to look ambient and setting appropriate. So as long as people can see that you're trying to achieve something, to look setting appropriate, to help create the immersion, instead of finding excuses why your undistressed black t-shirt is totally found in a bunker and okay. As long as people see you're actually participating in the community, no one's gonna give you crap. There might be one or two costuming Nazis that are gonna give you crap, but just ignore those guys. Uh, one time on Zakonki LARP in uh, Poland, a long time ago, I came back from a mission. So I was really sweaty, I was drenched, it was hot as hell. So I removed my entire clothing except my underpants and um, then I went to the bar in the base and the barman is like, dude, why are you wearing underpants? And I'm like, hell, guy's got a point, why am I wearing underpants? So I removed my underpants as well because he had a point. Even nowadays, when I feel too hot or just not feel like wearing my armor, I'll just remove my armor on a LARP and run around in a t-shirt and, you know, no one cares, and those who care, it's uh, their problem, not mine, because, like, seriously. I see all of this stuff in a very relaxed way, and I go there to any event of that sort to have fun. Uh, yes, wearing full thick armor and um, looking awesome is part of the fun, but so is the ability to remove it at any time, and so is the ability to be a noob who just goes there with not a perfect costume and still has fun and makes friends and has some action and so on. Also, kind of a part of this, uh, costuming is a skill, so no one sane would be expecting you or themselves to be really good right off the bat. It's something you learn over a lo long period of time. So, there's that. Point number two. Many people in the post-apocalyptic setting tend to be really hindered by their will to take their normal clothing, which they use otherwise, and use it also for their costume. And the devil lies in the also. So I often read stuff like how do I distress my pants in such a way that I can wash it off afterwards and they're not totally ruined because these uh, pants are my uh, regular street pants and I want them in mint condition. Now it is possible to have some uh, clothing items that are used both um, in mint condition and then you apply some non-permanent uh, grunge effects to them and then you use them as a part of your post-apocalyptic kit. It's not impossible. However, especially if you're a beginner, it just adds a lot of complications that you cannot use. Right? You have a lot on your plate already as a beginner. So just do yourself a favor and get some clothes that are dedicated to your post-apocalyptic costume only and nothing else. And you will see how liberating it is. Now you can do anything with this. You can distress it, you can ruin it, you can 
repair it again, you can do anything with it because it serves no other purpose than being a part of your costume, okay? So just free yourself from this dual kind of thing. It's um, something that, for some reason, appears only in uh, the post-apocalyptic genre. Although it's not some reason, and I know exactly what the reason is. Because if it's uh, for a fantasy LARP or something like this, you do not usually have fantasy clothes in your everyday life. You don't have your fantasy pants that you also wear on the street all the time. I mean, you might, but most people don't. In the post-apocalyptic setting, however, many people want to do exactly this. So, like, I already have some pants, I want to use them. Um, and this is also made even more complicated by, some, uh, by a thinking mistake that I used to have. I used to think that, hey, I want to use these pants, or this jacket, or whatever, this clothing item, that I have been wearing for a long time on my other adventures. I went to metal concerts with it, I went to other countries with it, it has seen some stuff together with me, and I want this to be a part of my post-apocalyptic costume, because uh, my, uh, for me personally, my post-apocalyptic characters are all pretty much just me in a post-apocalyptic setting. So a, a bit cooler version of me. While it's possible to use your jacket that has seen some metal concerts with you as part of your costume, it will just make creating that costuming artwork more difficult. So what I invite you to do, in case you're one of the people thinking like that, uh, just realize that badassery, or you being a badass or not being a badass, has nothing to do with what you wear. And in fact, you also do not make your costume less of a your personal costume by taking some uh, dedicated parts for it, instead of using something that you have been wearing already for a long time. You will still be the person creating that costume and working all the small personal details into it. So just take dedicated stuff. That's the biggest advice I can give you. Next point. Stuff that I recommend to avoid as a beginner. Camouflage pattern, camo, as well as totally black stuff, like a totally black t-shirt. It's totally possible for someone with more experience to use camo or black stuff or whatever really in a good way that still contributes to a good overall costume. However, especially camo pattern stuff and black t-shirts tend to just make your costume look cheap. And if you're a beginner, then chances are that you will have uh, a lot of trouble working with those things. So yes, it's possible, but do you want the additional complexity that those things bring with you? Probably not. Now, I use a lot of uh, military-looking stuff, but for that I take some um, stuff from the past. 80s, 70s, back when camo pattern didn't exist in military gear, at least in Germany. So I, I use just uh, unicolored olive stuff, and that's a lot easier to work with, because it's just... it doesn't give you that um, out of a military shop look that so many possible beginners have. Obviously it all depends on the setting. If you're going to modern soldier calypse con, <laughs> I just made it up, then you might want to look all camo. Like, it's very, very setting dependent, obviously. Or if you're doing something that's severely cyberpunk, more than post-apo, then a black short or black something else might also be okay. Again, there are also ways to make black not entirely black and look distressed, but it's difficult. So just avoid those two things. Um, on a related note, uh, on LARPs and festivals that encourage Fallout looks, guys, just buying a cheap vault suit for $20 off of the internet Putting that on and thinking that your costume is done is not the best way to go. I personally don't care how you look or how anyone else looks. And uh, again, people are not probably not going to give you crap for that. But you're just not looking very original in a brand new vault suit. And it's, yeah, it's just a bare minimum. Or, or even just a bit below. It's a different story if you take that suit, pimp it up, modify it, improve it, add some additional gear, and so on and so forth. It's totally possible, and I've seen it many times, it's totally possible to make a cool-looking uh, vault dweller. Of course. But just buying something for 20 bucks and putting it on and thinking your costume is done, 
just uh, you know might, might work the first time but you will get bored with it yourself really quick so just go beyond that I, I invite you to do that next point and it has kind of to do with a general attitude towards costuming especially in this genre and the point is I am not your Bible and neither is anyone else yes sure the most of my advice applies to the most things for the most people trying to do this kind of stuff but I am a big advocate of encouraging people to use their own brain anything creative has to do with discovering your own ways your own style your own methods and post-apocalyptic crafting especially encourages that it's all about repurposing just think about the whole thing the world has come to an end and you're supposed to make a costume an armor a weapon from whatever you find you generally do not need or even want blueprints for that or someone to tell you their exact one way to do things that's why people never get any blueprints from me someone once asked hey how do I make the bad snake well it's great that you like the bad snake but why don't you take it as an inspiration and make something else that is like kind of inspired by that visually but why would you want to make exactly that because it's so much more fun, at least for me, to develop my own things, to scavenge a pile of junk and see what can I make out of that. And it's a new challenge and a new interesting challenge every time. So for all the people out there who are uh, watching this channel and are thinking like, hmm, well, but how do I do exactly this and that? I don't know. I experiment every time. I improvise every time. That's the fun in it. Just let go of this idea that you can break something. You cannot. Just get. That's why you get dedicated clothes from the advice number one in this video. Just get something that you're willing to break and go ahead without fear. Yes, you will break it. Yes, the first times your custom is not gonna be great, but as you do it again and again and again and again, it will become super awesome. You will gain skill. You will gain knowledge. You will gain experience. And you will have fun doing so instead of being like, Oh shit, am I using this screw correctly? Am I supposed to be doing like this? I need to ask Dimitri if I'm allowed to do this. So basically watch my Stop Limiting Yourself video. I can't reiterate this one advice enough. Creativity and especially post-apocalyptic crafting is all about experimenting and being your own man or your own woman or your own whatever you identify is as your own sentient being, basically. So be sentient. Use your brain. An advice for people who already have a costume, but are not happy with it, is take a trash can, take the lid of the trash can, open it up, put your costume in there, close it, and never look back. <laughs> okay? That might sound a bit extreme, but hear me out. Here's the thing. Very often in costuming and in life in general, it's so much easier to take something that is not good, that's bad material, that had a bad start, that has some mistakes in it, and to ditch it entirely and start anew with new knowledge, new skills, new inspiration, new motivation, new concept, new ideas, new everything. Just start anew. If you're not happy with your costume or a part of it, I invite you to ditch it into the trash can. Now, it's great if you can scavenge some parts of that. What you might try first is disassembling it into its base components. You know, remove everything from your one leather jacket and try redecorating it if it's the leather jacket that you like, but maybe you don't like your decoration work from your first attempt. But hanging on to something that is not really good will just hinder your progress. And there is actually a psychological name for this kind of thing. It's called sunk cost fallacy. You have sunk some cost, be it monetary cost, or time cost, or effort, or all of those. You have sunk some cost into your costume, and now you're afraid to let go. So your general artistic evolution should revolve around a blurry idea, a blurry ideal idea of how you want your costume to look, sort of, in the future. And every step you take should be leading towards that goal. If your creative evolution process now revolves around the need 
that you perceive to keep some certain elements of your costume just because you have already created them, then you're kind of doing it wrong. So just look at the big picture every time. Does what you have already created fit into it? Yes, great, take it. No, then ditch it. That's it. And that leads me to the bigger point of being too attached to your costume in general. And uh, this also leads to the problem of not accepting criticism and becoming defensive about your costume. Now, I have also been there and whether or not you're willing to accept criticism or not depends on what kind of state of mind you're currently in. So when you have spent 10 hours on creating whatever, then all you want to hear after that is yes, it's good. At least for now. Obviously. But when you then hear some more criticism about it, at some point you should become ready to accept it and to look again at yourself and your work critically. Criticism hurts at first, that's its entire purpose, because it points out what's not good, what needs improvement. But once you accept it, then you can do that thing or things that bring improvement into your costume or into whatever other kind of work. What I however see, unfortunately for the people for whom it's the case, because again, I don't care how someone else runs around, but they might. So what I see a lot is people um, trying to find a lot of excuses. The one I made fun of the last time in my last video with I found it in a bunker being the most famous one. So yes, it's good that you have worked and achieved some sort of result already. It's respectable. However, do not stay there forever. Dwell on it for a while, be happy about your costume, however it might look, for a bit of time and then become open to tearing it down and building it up stronger, okay? And that means accepting criticism. It doesn't mean that whenever someone says, oh, but I would make it with like more bottle caps or less bottle caps or whatever, then you should just do whatever someone says. But if there are some people whose advice you generally respect, or if there is just a ton of people repeating the same advice, such as, for example, um, your black t-shirt looks entirely new, you might want to distress it, you might want to ignore this the first two times after you've put your black t-shirt for the first time, which took you a lot of effort. But after that, do accept that criticism and actually try to do something about it. And you will notice how much you grow if you do this again and again and again. And uh, to be honest, uh, at the start, and I'm talking about the start of my artistic career in general, back when I was studying photography at the college, I was the last person to accept criticism. My professor would go like, hmm, okay, that's a nice start in the picture right there, but I would remove this, I would remake that, and this looks like crap. That's what he would say, exactly like this. And I would go like, mm, you old fart. And then I would be grumpy for the rest of the day and hate my professor and so on and so forth. Then I would calm down, look at the picture again and go like, yes, the old guy's right. This looks like crap, I redo this. And my pictures became so much better for it. Criticism and accepting it and acting upon it is the key foundational stone of ever becoming better at anything else. Again, you don't need to constantly just be bombarded by criticism and let it all in and feel bad about yourself because your costume is not great yet, but you do need to accept it, at least from time to time. And do not be super defensive about your costume. Also, whenever organizers of an event which have created this world, created this setting and have a certain idea about how they want the setting to be, tell you that Hey, maybe on our post-apocalyptic steampunk high fantasy event you should not go with a modern military backpack, just as examples, then you might want to listen to them. Of course, the, everyone has their own idea about what the apocalypse is or isn't and so on and so forth, but just do yourself and everyone else a favor and when you're going to an event like Wasteland Weekend, look like Wasteland Weekend. When you're going to an event like let's say some zombie apocalypse, uh, everyone wearing military clothes, LARP, look like that. So just be flexible, don't try to force the one true post-apocalyptic vision version of yourself onto yourself and someone else. Try new stuff, 
I look awesome as a zombie survivor, but I also look awesome as a steampunk post-apocalyptic whatever guy and so on and so forth. Hell, I would look good as a pirate. Pirate apocalypse. How cool would that be? So, be open to take different roles, which again can be really close to the way you really are, in the way you act, and so on and so forth. But be also willing to try out different genres. So, be more open. Okay, this whole thing is about trying out new things, discovering some other aspects of yourself and the world. It is not about uh, being like, oh, okay, this black t-shirt and blue jeans look is the way I always were, and that's how I'm gonna, like, go through the world. You're not learning a lot by this. You still can come back to this if you want later on, but just try out some new things. Accept stuff. Let it happen. Be a part of a community, of another community, of this sort of looks, of that sort of looks, of that style, of this style. You get the idea. This time it was really theoretical, but I find that these things are those that keep you, as if you're a beginner, from becoming the best you can become, most of all, actually. All this stuff, it's more about those rough general ideas of what you're willing to accept and what you're willing to try out and how you see yourself and this entire post-apocalyptic thing so much more than it is just about like how do I ro roadkill my jacket or how do I use a screwdriver. Those things are small. Being ready to experiment, being open to criticism and just being a part of the community, even if a new one, and just having fun and not worrying too much about stuff is so much more important and will get you very far and you will have a lot of fun. And I hope to have some fun with you when I meet you on whatever event. I wasn't out in a long time working on Dustwind all this time. So yeah, um, I hope this video was useful for you. If so, then like, comment, subscribe. And also keep in mind, I can only keep making these videos for you if you support me on Patreon. That's the first link in the video description. I will see you next time. Until then, hail the snail.